Hello, good morning to all of you. Today's topic will be myofunctional appliance part 1. There will be two parts and I will divide uh, some of the myofunctional appliance to be in part 1 and the others will be in part 2. These are the learning outcome. By the end of the lecture, you should be able to define and describe the principles of functional appliance, classify the functional appliance, and you should be able to explain the mode of action of functional appliance, which is the activa activator, bayonetta, twin block, frankel, jasper jumper, and herbs appliance. As for introduction, the functional appliances, or also known as myofunctional appliances, are appliances that depend upon the orofacial musculature for the action. In contrast to active removable appliances, the force component for functional appliances are derived from orofacial musculature. So what the functional appliance do is, the functional appliance will transmit, eliminate and guide the natural forces of the musculature. The functional appliances are used for growth modification procedure that are aimed at intercepting and treating jaw discrepancies. They can bring about the following changes, an increase or decrease in jaw size, a change in spatial relationship of the jaw, change in direction of growth of the jaws, and acceleration of desirable growth. For the definition of the functional appliance, there are three types of definition according to the writer or author of the book. Based on Balaji, functional appliance is a loose or fitting appliance which harness natural forces of the orofacial musculature that are transmitted to the teeth and alveolar bone through the medium of the appliance. According to Profit, functional appliance is an appliance which posture the mandible forward and according to the Graeber and Newman, Functional appliance is an appliance which transmits, eliminates or guides the natural forces for the purpose of modifying growth and moving teeth. These are the brief history of the myofunctional appliances. We can see that the first functional appliance was invented by Norman Kingsley in 1879 which is called bike jumping appliances and that is followed by Pierre Robin and then uh, they create monoblock and then uh, modified the monoblock and then later in 1905 herbs created the herbs appliance followed by andresen which created the andresen activator then bayonetta and then in 1957 frankel created the function regulator and finally the latest one clark created the twin block so according uh, so among all these appliances the most commonly used now is twin block there are two broad principles of the myofunctional appliance which is the force application and force elimination force application is a compressive stress and strain act on the structures involved and result in primary alteration in form with a secondary adaptation in function. Most of the fixed and removable functional appliances work on this principle. For the force elimination, this principle involves the elimination of abnormal or restrictive environmental influences on the dentition thereby allowing optimal development. All functional appliances are assemblies of few simple components. Each component has a desired function and is generally incorporated for a specific purpose. The currently used appliances are made of combination of three basic functional components. So what are these three basic functional components? They are the bike plane, shield or screen and construction or working bike. So these three components produce the skeletal and dental alveolar changes by acting on the following. The bite planes will act on the eruption of the teeth. And then the shield and screen will act on the lingual facial muscle balance and the construction and working bite will act on the mandibular repositioning. So now we will look the effect of one by one of these three components. For the bite plane, the bite planes may be flat or inclined, anterior or posterior, 
in contact with single or multiple teeth. The flat anterior bite plane is used to disocclude the posterior teeth and then the effect are differential eruption of posterior teeth, the intrusion of incisor, overbite reduction, increment in mandibular growth and increase in facial height, whereas the posterior bite plane is used to disocclude the anterior teeth and the effect are correction of anterior crossbite, eliminate premature contact that leads to anterior mandibular displacement and improvement in class 3 molar relationship. The second component is shields or screens. This appliance will shield the muscle away thereby allowing unrestricted growth of the jaw and dentoalveolar structures. It is believed to modify the equilibrium theory of the tooth position and allowing the upper and lower arches to expand in cases with constricted arches. Equilibrium theory is when the normal tooth position is achieved by equal forces between tongue and sycamoral muscles by the lips and cheeks. The third component is construction or working bite. The registration of maxillomandibular relationship was done by asking the patient to reposition the lower jaw, either backward, forward or laterally. This is based on the assumption that by displacing or repositioning the mandible from its rest position and thus stretching the muscle attached to it, the muscle reflex activity tends to restore the mandible to a postural position that was originally determined by the unstretched muscle. Hence, most construction bites are taken at a vertical dimension that is beyond the freeway space or interocclusal clearance. Okay, now we will move into classification of myofunctional appliance. Uh, according to your textbook by Balaji, there are five classification of the myofunctional appliance. So the first one is the basic classification of functional appliance. For this basic classification, the appliance is divided into three, which is removable functional appliance, fixed functional appliance, and semi-fixed functional appliances. The removable functional appliances are functional appliances that can be removed or inserted into the mouth by the patient at will, for example, activator and Frankel appliance. For the fixed functional appliance, it is the functional appliance that are fitted on the teeth by the orthodontist and cannot be removed at will by the patient, for example, herbs appliance and Jasper jumper. The third one is the semi-fixed functional appliances. This is the appliances that have certain components fixed, for example, then halts and bus appliance. The second classification is by profit. They are divided into three, which is tooth-borne passive appliances, tooth-borne active appliances, and the final one is tissue-borne appliances. The tooth-borne passive appliances have no intrinsic force generating components such as spring or screws. They depend on the soft tissue trash and muscular activity to produce the desired treatment result. For example, of these appliances is activator, bionator, and herbs appliance. The second one is tooth-borne active appliances. They include modification of active activator and bionator that include expansion screws or other active components like springs to provide intrinsic force for transverse or anteroposterior changes. The final one under the classification by profit is the tissue bond appliances. These appliances are mostly located in the vestibule and have little or no contact with the dentition. For example, of the appliances includes the functional regulator of Frankel. The third one is the classification by Tom Graeber. The classification is divided into three, which is group A, B, and C. Group A is the teeth-supported appliances, for example, catalans and inclined planes. Group B is teeth or tissue-supported appliances, for example, activator and bionator. Group C is the vestibular position appliances with isolated support from tooth or tissue, for example, oral screens, franker appliances, and lip bumpers. The fourth classification is based on the transmission of force. It is divided into three groups, which is group 1, group 
2 and group 3. Group 1 consists of appliances that transmit the fo muscle force directly to the teeth for the purpose of correction of the occlusion. Examples include oral screen and inclined planes. Group 2 are appliances that reposition the mandible and the resultant force is transmitted to the teeth and other structures. For example, include activator and bayonetta. For group 3, is the appliances that reposition the mandible but the area of operation is the vestibule outside the dental arch. For example, Franco appliances and vestibular screen. The final classification is the classification into myotonic and myodynamic appliances. Uh, the myotonic appliances is the functional appliances that depends on the muscle mass for the action, whereas the myodynamic appliances is the functional appliances that depend on the muscle activity for their function. Functional appliances are capable of producing the following changes. The first one is the orthopedic changes, second one is the dentoalveolar changes, and the third one is the muscular changes. For the orthopedic changes, myofunctional appliances are capable of accelerating the growth in the condylar region. They can bring about remodeling of the glenoid fossa. They can be designed to have retreat-stiff influence of the growth of the jaw. And they can change the direction of growth of the jaw. For the dental alveolar changes, they can bring changes in three plane, which is the sagittal plane, trans transverse plane and vertical plane. Most functional appliances allow the upper anterior to tip palatally and the lower anterior to tip labially. In the transverse direction, they can bring about expansion of the dental arches by incorporating screws in them and by shielding the buccal muscle away from the dental arch. In the vertical plane, they can design to allow selective eruption of teeth. For the muscular changes, the functional appliances can improve the tonicity of the orofacial musculature. Okay, now we will have a look on the advantages and limitations of the functional appliances. The advantages are, it enables elimination of abnormal muscle function, thereby aiding in normal development. Treatment can be initiated at an early stage. It is most often stated started in the mid-dentition period. As the treatment is started at, at an early age, psychological disturbance associated with the mal occlusion can be avoided. These appliances are mostly fabricated at the dental lab. Thus, less chair site time is spent which enable more patients to be treated. The frequency of the patient visit to the orthodontist is less than in case of fixed or removable appliances. They do not interfere with oral hygiene maintenance and most functional appliances are worn during the night. Thus, patient acceptance is good. However, there comes some limitation. First limitation is they cannot be used in adult patients in whom growth has ceased. They cannot be used to bring about individual tooth movement and most functional appliances are dependent on the patient for timely wear. Thus, patient cooperation is essential for the success of the treatment. They may require pre-functional orthodontic tooth movement for correction of minor local irregularities that may interfere with the functional therapy. Fixed appliances therapy may be required at the termination of treatment for final detailing of the occlusion. There are a few factors to consider in case selection for myofunctional appliances. The factors are as follows. First, age. Second, the social consideration. The third one is dental consideration. And the final one is skeletal consideration. For each, the growth modification therapy using functional appliances is possible only in a growing patient. The optimum time for myofunctional therapy, according to most authors, in, is in between 10 years of age and in pubertal growth phase. For social consideration, as stated by Anderson, functional appliances achieve their result within minimum supervision and unlike fixed appliances, can be worn safely for a long period without supervision. Unfortunately, all cases cannot be treated with functional appliances alone. 
Patient who live far away from the clinic or those attending boarding school may benefit from these appliances, provided they fulfill all the criteria for case selection. However, such patients should exhibit high degree of motivation if the functional therapy is to be successful. For dental consideration, an either case for functional appliance therapy is one that is devoid of gross local irregularities like rotation and crowding. Only in uncrowded cases, it is likely that a mal occlusion can be treated satisfactorily by functional appliances alone. The local irregularities are treated prior to or after functional therapy with fixed appliances. For skeletal consideration, moderate to severe skeletal class 2 malocclusion due to short or retrognathic mandible and low angle cases are ideally suitable for functional appliances treatment. Most functional appliance treatment allow vertical development of posterior dentoalveolar structures which may induce backward rotation of mandible. Backward rotation of mandible may worsen the profile in high-angle cases. Therefore, this treatment is not really suitable for high-angle cases. There is also no strong clinical evidence of skeletal effect in class 3 functional appliances treatment. And for class 3 functional appliances treatment, only dental alveolar changes seen clinically. The next one is VTO or Visual Treatment Objective. The objective of VTO is to visualize how patient profile will be after the functional appliance treatment or therapy. How to do the VTO? It's very easy. We just ask the patient to posture the mandible forward. An improvement in profile when posturing the mandible forward is considered as a positive indication for our functional appliances. So for this photo, we can see that on the left side, patient is in... Uh, the mandible is uh, is backward and then the right photo shows that we ask the patient to posture the mandible forward we can see that the profile is improved so in this patient functional appliance therapy uh, is good to improve the profile this is the list of myofunctional appliances starting with vestibular screen lip bumper activator Franker appliances, Bayonetta, Twimlock, Herbs appliances, and Jasper jumper. For, for this part 1 lecture, I will explain vestibular screen, lip bumper, and activator. Whereas for the other myofunctional appliances, which is the Franker, Bayonetta, Twimlock, Herbs appliances, and Jasper jumper will be explained in the part 2 of this lecture. The first myofunctional appliances that I will explain is the vestibular screen. Vestibular screen is the simple functional appliances that takes the form of a curved shield of acrylic place in the labial vestibule. It was first introduced by Newell in 1912. So we can see that figure 2A is the standard vestibular screen with the acrylic at the labial vestibule only. Whereas in figure 2B, additional screen is placed on the lingual aspect of the teeth. What is the principle of vestibular screen? It works in two ways. The first one is force application, where the screen will apply the force from the circumoral musculature to the teeth. Secondly is the force elimination, is <coughs> when the relief of the circumoral musculature forces from the teeth, thereby allowing teeth to move forward due to forces exerted by tongue. So in what cases that we can use vestibular screen? First case is the interception of habits such as mouth breathing, thumb sucking, tongue thrusting, lip biting and cheek biting. We also can use vestibular screen for treatment of mild distal occlusion. And then we can also use vestibular screen to perform mild muscle exercise to help in correction of hypotonic lip and cheek muscles. And finally, we also can use vestibular screen in the correction of mild anterior proclination. Management of vestibular screen. Firstly, we need to instruct the patient to wear vestibular screen 12 hours at night and 2 to 3 hours during the day. Always maintain lip seal while wearing vestibular screen. 
Inform patient the side effect of wearing vestibular screen. There will be some irritation at the sulcus and phrenal area. May have some traumatic ulcer. If there is irritation and ulceration, we need to check for any sharp edges and such area of the vestibular screen should be carefully trimmed. There are a few types of modification of vestibular screen. The first one is Hox modification. is where we add a metal ring in between upper and lower lips and this will be used as muscle exercise. Additional screen can also be added at the lingual aspect of the teeth so that we can break the tongue thrusting habit. This lingual screen is attached to vestibular screen by thick wire. We can see that in figure 2b. For patients with uh, that breathe through the mouth, holes can be created at the vestibular screen to help mouth breathers. The next one is lip bumper. It's also called as lip plumber, modified vestibular screen or combined removable fixed appliances. It can be used in both maxilla and mandible to shield the lips away from the teeth. These are the photos of lip bumper. We can see that in figure 3a is the profile view of the lip bumper. We can see that the wire is attached uh, from first molar on one side to the first molar on the, on the other side. And it will give a distal movement to the first molar and the anterior movement for the lower lingual teeth. Figure 3B shows the view uh, of the lip bumper from above. So we can see that there is an acrylic added at the wire anterior to the lower incisor teeth. And there is also loop uh, in front of the molar band. And then figure 3C shows that uh, it's a custom made lip bumper. So uh, it comes in a wire, thick wire, with the acrylic added at the anterior portion. Then it will be attached to the molar tube and then will be adjusted according to the perfect length intraorally. Now we will look into the uses of lip bumper. Lip bumper is used to break the lip sucking habit, to increase the arch length, to reduce crowding. To decrease the excessive overjet by proclination of lower incisors, to augment the anchorage, to distalize the first molar, and the lip bumper can also be used as a space regainer if the lower molars have drift miserly due to early loss of deciduous teeth. So now we will move into the design of lip bumper. Lip bumper mostly used in the mandibular arches. It can be ready-made or custom-made in various size using 0.9 mm stainless steel wire extending from first molar to first molar band. The anterior portion of the wire uh, from canine to canine is reinforced with acrylic. The posterior end of wire is soldered to molar bands. Then the molar bands will be cemented to the first molar teeth. Now we will move into the next myofunctional appliances which is called activator. Activator is a loose fitting appliances which help in positioning the mandible forward. It is monoblock type. It developed by Andresen in 1908 in Denmark and it is also called Andresen activator and functional jaw orthopedic appliances. So now we will look into the indication and contraindication of the activator. Activator is used in the class 2 division 1 malocclusion, class 2 division 2 malocclusion, class 3 malocclusion, class 1 open bite malocclusion, class 1 deep bite malocclusion, and it also can be used as a preliminary treatment before major fit appliance therapy to improve the skeletal jaw relation. Activator can also be used for post treatment retention and with children with lack of vertical development in the lower face height. However, activator is contraindicated in these few cases. It is indicated in correction of the class 1 problem of crowded teeth 
caused by disharmony between tooth size and jaw size. The appliance is contraindicated in children with excess lower fascia height and extreme vertical mandibular growth. The appliances is not used in children whose lower incisors are severely procumbent. The appliances cannot be used in children with nasal stenosis caused by structural problems within the nose or chronic untreated allergy, and the appliances has limited application in non-growing individuals. Now, what are the advantages of activator? It can be used in existing growth of the jaw, and during treatment, patient experience minimal oral hygiene problem. The interval between appointments are long and there are also a short chair side time during appointments and it's also very economical in terms of reduces number of visit to dental clinic per thorough treatment compared to fixed appliances. So now what is the disadvantages of activator? It requires very good patient compliance and it cannot produce a precise detailing and finishing of occlusion and it needs a post-treatment fixed appliance therapy. Activator may produce moderate mandibular retraction, the anteriorly downwards, and is not suitable for patients with excessive lower face height. So now, what is the mode of action of activator? Activator allow musculoskeletal adaptation by anterior positioning of mandible. Activator is loosely fixed in the mouth and patient has to move the mandible forwards to engage the appliances. This will result in stretching of elevator muscles and create myotactic reflex. Myotactic reflex can produce kinetic energy and condylar adaptation. Kinetic energy will prevent forward growth of maxillary dental alveolar process and move it distally. Whereas the condylar adaptation will allow condylar growth that will increase length and forward growth of the mandible. Force may also generate it while swallowing and sleeping, and this force is called viscoelastic property. So now what is the management of activator? Patients should be well informed regarding the risks and benefits and show a good compliance to throughout treatment. For the first week, patient need to wear the appliance for 2 to 3 hours per day. And for the second week, patient need to wear the appliance 3 hours during the day and during sleeping. Uh, so the total timing should be at least more than 10 to 12 hours during the day and sleeping. And then, uh, the clinician need to start trimming, adjusting and modify the appliance gradually once patient getting used to it. Uh, this trimming is used for vert vertical, sagittal, and transverse control of teeth. The clinician also need to check for any changes in occlusion every three months review. So the next question will be how long should wear the activator? The activator should be wear until the desired effect are seen, maybe up to one to two years. Okay, we already f uh, finished learning about the three myofunctional appliances, which is the vestibular screen, lip bumper, and activator. The other five of my myofunctional appliances uh, will be explained more in part two. So you can read first in your textbook about Frankel appliance, Bionetta, two block, herbs appliances, and Jasper jumper. And we will see you again in part two lecture. Uh, before that, uh, I hope by the end of the le this lecture, you can already define and describe the principles of functional appliances. You also should be able to classify the functional appliances and you also should be able to explain the mode of action of the every functional appliances explained here. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, have a nice day and great day ahead. Stay safe.